Hi my loves, welcome to my current skincare routine. Tonight I want to do a get unready with me video. I want to show you my current evening skincare. And there's kind of a few things that are special about the routine I've been following recently. So first of all, as far as I know, it's like the exact routine that my grandma followed. So this was my grandma. This is Grandma Charlotte that I was named after. So we always had kind of a bond over that, of course. And I just thought she was so beautiful and so glamorous and exotic because she was, I think by modern standards, a bit high maintenance. People call me that all the time. And I guess I got it from her because she did have quite a beauty routine even into her 90s. And I remember being a little girl watching her do her skincare and her makeup and her lipstick and just being so fascinated. Um, my mom was actually really low maintenance. I don't know if that was out of like necessity or budget or she just had other things she wanted to do. But I think that's why I was like extra fascinated with Grandma Charlotte's routine whenever she would visit or I would visit her. I just remember looking at the products that she had. She had one of those old fashioned hard suitcases and products like this. She had this exact face powder, the Cody Airspun. I actually really recommend this face powder. It's so affordable. And I remember just like being fascinated with the packaging as a kid. So. Clearly, I grew up to be the skincare, makeup obsessed granddaughter that she raised. <laughs> so I thought this was kind of interesting as an adult to go and try all the products I remember her trying, the steps that she did. I read a lot of vintage beauty books, just fascinated by that. And so this is a true like 1950s skincare routine from what I can tell from everything I've read. And it makes sense that grandma kind of carried her 50s routine all the way into, like I said, her 90s. So these are the things I remember her doing. I think since it was good for her skin type, genetically it makes sense that it's good for my skin type too. Um, it's kind of a tried and true classic routine. These are classic products that were available in the 50s that you can still get today. So all of these are kind of products that have stood the test of time. And I used to love to get the newest, I still love to get <laughs> the newest, most fun skincare thing that comes out. But I have to say there's really something to a product that's been around for a hundred years and it still works today. So that's another unique thing about this routine. And another thing that is perhaps the best thing is these are all drugstore products. This is by far the most affordable skincare routine that I've ever done. And I have to say it's also been the most effective. I'm gonna get into my results soon, but I've been following this for about almost two months straight. I've replaced most of these products. I've gone through a whole bottle at least. So I can definitely say I've given it a full test and even though they are lower end drugstore products, my skin has been so happy. So that's why I'm so happy to share this with you and I personally think it's always fun to see what other people do and get vintage tips and things like that. So the very first step in my nightly skincare routine is to put on a robe and <laughs> I'm gonna go switch right now. Ta-da! I used to be kind of lazy about trying to do my skincare in my clothes for the day still and I don't know why because obviously you're gonna have to change to like shower or put on your pajamas or whatever eventually <laughs> um, but I would just kind of try and avoid that and as a result I wouldn't be as thorough with washing my face because I wouldn't want to let things get on my clothing or my jewelry oh in fact I should take these off um, so that's the first step that I do now and I again I remember grandma always being in her robe and I actually <laughs> read it as the first step in most of the vintage routines that I read. It also makes you feel more fabulous. This is just a cheap robe from Amazon but it's like silky and pink and it has fun sleeves and I don't have to worry if I get makeup or skincare on it. It's just washable. So I really like doing that as a first step and it just makes everything else better. Also I wanted to point out I do all of these steps at my vanity which is actually in my bedroom but it's hard to film in that little corner so we're here in my office where I'm going to use as a vanity for tonight but I will be showing you my vanity in my next video as a vanity tour which has been requested and I think that'll be so much fun so definitely hit subscribe for that um, but I just wanted to mention it it's modern day we kind of think of doing our skincare routines over the sink but if you really think about it at least for myself in this routine only one step <laughs> uses water so it's really not necessary to be hunched over the sink the whole time. I don't feel like that's a satisfying way to do my skincare. I feel like I'm rushing and it's just not really pleasant at the end of a long day to have to stand up to do something. So for me, I like to sit down in my vanity and it's like, ah, I can like sit down finally, 
can do these steps and take my time. I'm not like rushing myself. So that's why I love to do this at a vanity seated or for today in my office seated. So the first step was to get into the robe. The next thing I'm going to do is brush my hair 100 strokes. And that's a very old timey thing to do. But again, I remember grandma doing it. I remember her doing it to my hair. And I have to say, it makes your hair so healthy and shiny and soft. So today I just had my hair up in a scarf. My little victory roll here is kind of deflating anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my hair down and brush it out. And I don't really count 100 strokes, but I, I try to roughly estimate what feels like 100 strokes. Um, and the truly old fashioned way to do this is to like get upside down, flip yourself over so that your hair can, you know, really get a good brushing. If you can go outside to do it, if you can be in the sunshine to do it, all my old books say that's even better. Um, for our purposes, I'm just going to do it while we chat. Hopefully that doesn't bother anybody. By the way, my Cinderella wet brush is so cute. Um, <laughs> So I just brush out the tangles at first, kind of brush out all the hairspray from whatever I did. I didn't curl my hair today, obviously, so it's kind of a less dramatic brush out. I think a bobby pin just flew out of my hair somewhere though, so that's exciting. But I'm just gonna give this about 100 strokes every which direction so that my hair kind of gets a workout, my scalp gets circulation. And it really, really, really has helped level up the health of my hair. And it's been so happy since I've been doing this. Now I'm going to tie it up just in a messy bun. And much like I think you should get in a robe for your first step, I think you should get all of the hair off your face for a first step. So I always use these little hair bands to make sure my hair is totally out of the way. This one is so cute, it has a little cherry print on it. It's from the brand, the Vintage Cosmetic Company. I love everything they make and I love hair bands. I have so many of these. Just, I have one for every occasion. I don't know why I kind of collect these, but I love that you don't have to worry about getting makeup or skincare on them, you can throw them in the wash. All right, now we're finally going to remove my makeup and wash my face in one step one step only. I know modern skincare is all about like the double cleanse, the triple cleanse, all the different steps, but I have skin that tends towards the dry side. It's really normal skin. It's definitely not oily skin. Um, so keep that in mind when you're possibly picking and choosing some elements of the skincare to try it for yourself. But for me, since I do tend toward dry skin, I used to try and force a double cleanse in my past and it really would make my skin unhappy. Dry, irritated, red. My redness has come down so much since taking on this new skincare routine. But that said, I know it sounds crazy, I'm only going to use one product, one step, to get all of this melted makeup from the day off and to cleanse. So we are going to use a cold cream. Cold cream is a very old school product and from what I understand it actually just comes from the fact that you don't have to refrigerate it which is like mind blowing that you used to have to refrigerate cream. Um, but these are a few of the different cold creams that I like to use. There's this one, the Queen Helene brand, triple whipped. This is really thick. There's this one, this is like the cheapest beauty product and it's so multi-purpose. It's just Jergens face cream. You can use it as a cold cream cleanser. You can use it as a moisturizer. You can use any of these as a moisturizer, I think, in addition to a makeup remover. But this is the real classic, Pond's. This is what I remember grandma using, like this shape of the bottle, this mint green color. It's just so iconic to me that she would always have this in her suitcase. It doesn't have much of a scent at all, but what scent it does have just instantly reminds me of her. And I love cozy, feel good, grandma hug type of scents. So <laughs> that just makes me happy, honestly, when I wash my face at night. And that's what we're going to use tonight. But in the future, I could do a whole video comparing different types of cold cream. There's some higher end ones that are out there. There's these drugstore ones that I'm showing you. I think that'd be pretty fun. Let me know what you think. I love to do a deep dive on my channel. Like we did a deep dive into different micellar water cleansers. We could do cold cream as well. Okay, so 
I have just put this on right on top of my makeup for the day and I don't think I've ever used anything that melts makeup so easily as a cold cream. Oil cleansers do a pretty good job too, but there's just something about the texture of this cold cream where it just, you'll see, it's about to slide off in a very scary clown-like manner, <laughs> but it's worth it because it just makes my skin so soft. Ever since I've been doing this skincare routine, my husband has been like, trying to touch my skin and constantly telling me that my face feels so soft but i really feel like this routine has had the best husband approved results for what that's worth so i'm going to take a second dip of the cold cream and really melt it into my eyelashes my eyeliner i often wear waterproof mascara and this is one of the only things i know of that can really melt it off right away so I apologize for how crazy I probably now look. Wow. But as you can see, all that eye makeup just instantly melted. It's like I can just feel my naked lashes now, like there's no crusty mascara left. Also, for what it's worth, I can like open my eyes and see you. <laughs> and I don't have, a lot of cleansers give me like milky vision. I guess it's in my eyes or it's in my eyelashes. And I can't stand that. I don't know, it's weird. But when I'm washing my face, I wanna be able to open my eyes without them burning or anything. This is so gentle, I can just completely open my eyes like normal while I'm in the middle of all of this. And then the protection will come off. Oh yeah. <laughs> Should I make this the cover image? <laughs> Total Ronald McDonald situation. But again, it really melts the lipstick off and I can already feel it hydrating my lips. So now that I look this crazy, I'm going to go rinse it off and I'll be right back. Okay, naked face has been achieved. Um, the way I did that was to use a muslin cloth and rinse my face. So I have a bunch of these just simple cotton muslin cloths. They're a lot softer than like a washcloth. I need to put something on my lips. I can't stand a dry lip feeling. So this is Rosebud Salve. This is a really old school product since 1892. My mom used it, my grandma used it. Mm, it smells like roses. And it's just kind of a classic lip product. And I just, I always have to have something on my lips, either lipstick or chapstick. Anyway, so the way I rinse that product off usually is in the shower. I'm a nighttime shower girl or a bath and I just find that the easiest time to go ahead and rinse everything off. I use a pure muslin cloth and I just wet this and I just gently wipe it down. It gives you a little bit of exfoli exfoliation but it's not as rough as a washcloth would be um, and it's the perfect way to just kind of pick up all that product pick up all that melted makeup and have a clean palette afterward. So I just wanted to show you my skin. I have one breakout here. I have this whole region that's been covered by face masks recently. Has been a little bit prone to breakouts, but I have to say overall, I've had like zero percent of the acne that I usually am prone to. I'm usually prone to like stress breakouts or hormonal breakouts, and I haven't had any of that at all, which I find quite impressive considering how stressful <laughs> this year has been. So I've just had a couple little spots pop up that go under the face mask, so we'll deal with that in a second. But I just wanted to point out that I haven't had any acne, and I'm usually very prone to redness, especially in my cheeks and everything. So that has come way down since doing this routine. I'm a little bit pink right now because I've been messing with my face and I'll be pink the whole time I'm touching my face. But afterward, it kind of calms down to no redness, which is amazing. The next step after cleansing is toning. And what I remember grandma using, and what is kind of classic, is good old-fashioned witch hazel. This is just a product you can pick up at Walmart. It's Humphreys brand organic witch hazel with rose water. I can't remember for sure if this was the exact product that grandma had. I think it was, because that label looks really familiar to me. It's just a really pretty bottle either way. Um, but this does have alcohol in it, which modern skincare would kind of shun. Although I will say some of the people I know with the most beautiful skin use alcohol on it. 
So it's just a question of whether that's too drying for you or not, or if it's triggering for your skin. For me, it has been working really well, and every other step in this routine is so hydrating that I haven't had any dryness. But of course, the other version of this concept that I've always loved is the Thayer's Witch Hazel, again with rose, and this one has no alcohol, so that's a fantastic product that you could also check out. Both available from the drugstore, both really old classic brands, like since the 1800s, and good to check out. So typically how I would like to apply this is with a cotton pad. I actually forgot to bring any cotton pads in here, but it's just as well. I also will sometimes use a muslin cloth and just kind of saturate whatever I'm using and lightly press it into my skin. Feels really cool and refreshing. And there's just something magical about witch hazel as a toner or an astringent for your skin. I consider it to be pretty mild, but I always get good clarifying results from it. Another reason I like to do this as a second step is it does remove any other impurities in the skin, especially if you're using a cotton pad or whatever to kind of wipe away any last bits of mascara that might be lingering or any other impurities. That's kind of a, a second benefit of it as opposed to if you were to just spray your face or even kind of splash your face with it, you wouldn't get the cleansing benefits. So that's why I like to pat or wipe my skin with these. And I also feel like this is another thing that has been helping my redness um, and just in general making my skin a little less grumpy. So very happy for that. Next up, I'm going to go straight to moisturizer. And the moisturizer of choice is Olay. And this is their night firming cream. Back in the day, Olay had like, I think maybe one or two creams, oil of Olay, you could use it for daytime or nighttime. This is the nighttime formula. It's the classic pink moisturizer. This is what Grandma Charlotte used. This is like the original and there is something so comforting and soothing and like luxurious seeming to me about this, even though it is, I think like a $7 cream. I really like this product. I just think it has also made my skin so soft. I think it has that like comforting little smell to it and it's pink. So, and honestly, I think the Olay packaging is kind of pretty and chic, like not bad for drugstore packaging. So I like to take a big old dollop of moisturizer. You can use this moisturizer on its own. It's a great cream, but I like to feel very moisturized, very hydrated, especially overnight. I really want that hydration to stay in my skin so that I'm not like drying out overnight and getting wrinkly or something. So when I do my evening skincare, my goal is to like really hydrate my skin. And I love when I wake up to still feel like a bit of dewiness and hydration. For me, this product soaks in really fast. I don't feel it on my skin and in the morning, it's not that my skin is dry, it's that my skin isn't wet. <laughs> and I like to still feel like, okay, my product is still on a little bit in the morning and it has done its job all night. So enter grandma's trick and the modern audiences might find this pretty crazy. I was extremely hesitant about this, but adding a few drops of good old fashioned baby oil, Johnson and Johnson's baby oil about to go on my face. So I just take that big dollop of moisturizer, add a little shake of oil and mix it to combine. It was pretty common to add oil to moisturizers and masks and products in the old days, I think because sort of like the technology wasn't there to go ahead and sell it already formulated like that. So a lot of times when I'm reading vintage beauty books, they'll say to add oil to your moisturizer or to your mask or whatever. I remember grandma, she used baby oil for everything. Her body, her face, her skin, my skin, anybody who would pause for a moment so that she could put some baby oil on them, babies, adults, everybody. So it's a really age old product and I thought for sure it was gonna break me out because it just sounded crazy, like it's not the type of oil we usually associate with facial skincare these days, but I have got to say my skin feels so soft now. Um, it's like, I've, I've never understood when people say that they feel like their skin is soft on their face because I think like face skin is always soft, you know, unless you have like a beard. So 
I didn't really get it, but I have to say since doing this skincare routine, I will catch myself just like petting my cheeks and, and I like, I get it. They feel so soft, like baby soft. So I really love this routine for that reason. I feel like my makeup glides on even more smoothly because of it. It has again, that like sweet little baby smell, which I love. And it's a, it's a very simple old school trick. Um, take it or leave it, obviously modern skincare enthusiasts might have different opinions on some of these products. So I'm just sharing what I've been using and I know that seems crazy, but my skin is now a very plump and hydrated from those steps. And the next thing I'm gonna do also might seem crazy and I'm going to add some Vaseline. So Vaseline is an age old product. It hasn't gotten the best wrap in modern years, perhaps for good reason, it's really your call. And I actually do enjoy using Vaseline for some skincare purposes. Um, Marilyn Monroe famously would slather her whole face in it. I don't go that extreme, but I do follow the old school trick of adding it to my brows and my lashes to help them grow. And I do feel like they've gotten so much more full since doing this. And then I also use it as an under eye cream, a lip cream, cuticle cream, it's very multi-purpose. And like I said, I know it's not popular in today's world, but it is a natural one ingredient product from the earth, petroleum. So, you know, it's up to you how you feel about that. But I just use an eyelash brush or an eyeshadow brush to apply it. By the way, isn't this the cutest Vaseline tint ever? It's like pink and black, it's called bubbly has a very light champagne scent. You can find these, like, I usually find them at Target at the checkout. I'll try to link it though for you. Um, it's just so much more glamorous. Like if you are gonna use Vaseline in your skincare, I don't have it, but you know, like the big blue tub that it comes in is not cute. Like that seems like something you would see at the doctor's office and you'd be like, oh no, what are they doing with that? <laughs> like that's for suppositories. This is for eyelashes. <laughs> So that's why I like to get this cute little version of it. And you can also obviously refill this with just plain Vaseline because they sell this one as a lip therapy, but from what I can tell, it's exactly the same formula. It's just lightly scented and pink. And in my opinion, everything in my world should be lightly scented and pink, <laughs> as you can see. So I like to just use that brush to add it to my lashes and my brows. I always feel fabulous when I use a long eyelash brush. This is the e.l.f. brand. I think it was a dollar or two dollars at Target, but something more glamorous about this to use a long one instead of like the little sample ones you can get. It's the little details. I know some people think I'm silly for caring about packaging or the length and glamour of the eyelash wand, but as I say in my beauty guide, the most effective product is the one that you want to use. You could have a $100 cream and it just smells bad so you don't ever use it. Whereas you could have a $7 cream that has a light, lovely fragrance so you use it every night. The $100 cream might work better, but since you're not using it, it's not working. So that's why I always gravitate toward products that attract me in some way. The packaging, the scent, the color, whatever it might be, the fond memories of grandma, you know, anything that gets you excited or happy or have positive associations with your skincare is going to encourage you to use it, which is therefore going to make it effective. So I'll end my little speech there, but I do feel like it's kind of more fun. This is like an old timey like cigarette holder from the 20s or something. Like it's just adds a little something. All right, I, I just did my lashes and brows. I'm also just going to tap a little bit as an under eye cream. And again, I know that might seem crazy. If you have a sensitive under eye area that's prone to clogged pores, I don't know if it would work for you, but I have, you know, more, more prone to dryness under my eyes. So for me, this works really well. And again, it stays on all night. I'm also gonna do like forehead wrinkles anywhere I feel like a wrinkle might be growing. This is the stuff. And I will also just go ahead and get my lips again. Another nice thing about Vaseline is that it locks in moisture. So the previous layers of moisture that I've applied are now kind of sealed in where the Vaseline is sitting on my skin. So as you can see, I didn't like go crazy full Maryland style and coat my skin with it. 
but I did apply it in those key points where I feel like I've been getting some benefit from this cute little pink tin. Last but not least, I want to spend a little care on this zit. Um, and the way I've been treating my zits is again, pretty unusual with all the modern products out there, but I've been using calamine or calamine, calamine, calamine lotion. And I remember my mom putting this on me like when I had poison ivy, but my grandma would put it on me if I had a little breakout, you know, in my early tween years. So what I'm doing is simply applying it to a Q-tip and then dotting it on my spot. And it's just a simple drying formula. That's why it works on those rashes. <laughs> and for that same reason, it works on zits. And you know, there's so many fancy, expensive products on the market now for zits. I feel like I've tried most of them. This honestly might work the best out of anything I've tried. I get put it on at night. Like if a little something pops up, I put it on that night and usually by the next morning it's deflated like maybe i might do it two nights in a row but it is drying since that's the whole purpose of this um so i don't want to overdo it but a little dab will do ya put it on next morning things are usually much more <laughs> under control and again this is another product with strong childhood memories for me because i remember being fascinated with the fact it was pink obviously always been my favorite color <laughs> and so i like i had a poison ivy rash as a kid and I was so excited that my mom would put the pink lotion on it so it's kind of fun for me to use it again and I know I'm very strange to get excited about that kind of thing. This by the way is just drugstore or Kroger brand. I got it at the grocery store. I mean these products are really affordable. I think the most expensive one might be this organic witch hazel that I was using. Um, you could also get just simple cheap witch hazel as well. Very budget friendly and so Last but not least, I'm going to put a little lotion on my hands. This is the Johnson's Baby Lotion. I really like baby products because they tend to be pink and they tend to have that cute, cozy smell. Um, so, And I just liked the shape of this one. Isn't that like a nice... That'd be good in your handbag too, or your diaper bag if you actually have a baby to use these products on. So I'm just going to put this on my hands and my forearms. I think it's important to bring our skincare down to the backs of our hands, our necks, and our chest. I don't know if you noticed, but I always try to bring the products down as I was going during this um, whole demonstration. <laughs> and I think that's an important step. Also, one more thing I forgot to mention, this is like the cute travel size baby oil. You can get it in like the big old vat of baby oil, but I just thought this was nicer on my vanity. And again, I do put thought into how the bottles look and what's kind of cute and makes me want to reach for it. So that's why I have this little one. You can easily refill it from the bigger, cheaper bottle, but I just enjoy having these little sizes. So my skin is done, my hands are done. The very last step is something again that grandma would do, something again, very old fashioned, very old fashioned, and that's to put a little perfume on for bed. Again, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe would say that the only thing she wore to bed was Chanel number no. five. And it's just like a really classic thing to do, to have a little spritz. And for me, it's kind of the ultimate example of letting your beauty treatments be a form of self-care, like just for you. Because obviously, the world's not going to be smelling you while you're in bed. Hopefully your spouse or partner, whoever is. But in general, this is kind of just for you. So what my old beauty books say to do is to spritz your finger, put it under your nose. Isn't that so cute and silly? I think that's so fun because I can smell it so well right now. <laughs> and again, it's really just a little gesture that's meant just for you because nobody's gonna be coming and sniffing my upper lip. <sighs> but as I drift off to sleep, I get a little whiff of my perfume with every breath and it's very calming and soothing. Obviously you really don't need a lot, a tiny little dab there, or you could just do the wrist or whatever you feel like. Um, I've heard some people say they'll do like the back of their neck. So while they're sleeping, they, the smell kind of comes up. Whatever you want to do, whatever scent you want to use, I think it's a fun little way to treat yourself and to remind yourself that these things are <laughs> because you deserve it. And we don't always have to make beauty like for the outside world. Some of us are still in quarantine, not leaving our house. Nobody's seeing our makeup, nobody's seeing our glowy skin, nobody's seeing our face mask breakouts. <laughs> 
you know, what you do right now is just for you and that's something that we can all embrace and use it to sort of level up our lives and level up how we feel about ourselves on a daily basis. So I say treat yourself to smelling good. This is my favorite perfume, I think of all time. It's Amazing Grace by Philosophy. Kind of has like sort of a grandma scent now that I'm thinking about it with all these products. And like I said, I love the grandma type of scent. It's like a powdery, floral, light, fresh. So nice, like just wafting up right now. <laughs> but whatever perfume you want to try that with, that's a fun little step. And that is everything. So that's my grandma approved skincare routine. I love you, Grandma Charlotte. Aww. That's my 1950s approved skincare routine, all drugstore products, all effective, time tested, and I've been loving it. So thank you for getting ready for bed with me. I hope that you got some fun ideas or you just feel more inspired to take the best possible care of yourself because you deserve it so, so, so much. Like I mentioned, I have a beauty book that's full of tips and tricks. It's a fun little ebook PDF that you can easily access if you would like to get that and support my channel or subscribe and support my channel or just say hi in the comments or Whatever you feel like doing, I'm just really grateful that you're here and I hope you have a marvelous week. Don't forget next time I'm going to come back and show you my vanity and give you a tour and give you some ideas for how you can kind of set the stage so when you do this routine or any routine it does feel more special and more cozy and kind of create the perfect little nightcap before you go to sleep as a calming, happy little ritual. So that's what I'm wishing for you guys. That's what I'm basking in right now and I will see you in the next one. Good night.